I've had the opportunity to interact with a few of you and I must say well done to all of you because the work that you are doing is very inspiring and um, I look forward to learning more about your various projects. Uh, so without wasting any time, my name is Larissa Kufi. I'm from Ghana, the western side of Africa, and I work on a project called Levers in Heels. Levers in Heels is um, a digital platform I created to highlight African women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And I've been working on this for the past seven years now. Um, I, I created a little presentation. I'm not sure if um, that can come up. So this is Levers in Heels. So my story, I, I studied biomedical engineering in the University of Ghana. And um, I must say that the field of biomedical engineering at that time um, wasn't uh, understood properly by um, the country. It was, it's a very broad field and people limited it only to medical instrumentation. But I was very interested in prosthetic design and it's still my, one of my passions. And so um, I was one of four females in my class of about 40 at the University of Ghana. And this is us. Um, one issue we have in Ghana is um, the fact that we are not properly represented in STEM fields. When we started the course, I had uh, male lecturers come in to ask me, why am I here studying engineering? Shouldn't you be studying an arts course? There was another time that a lecturer pulled all four of us out of the class and asked us, what are we doing? Shouldn't we be working in the kitchen? <laughs> and um, these are some of the challenges we face in, in Ghana. And so at the end of my course, I became a teaching assistant and I decided to do something about the situation. So I started researching on what um, women in engineering and technology were up to so I could inspire myself and other girls um, who wish to pursue engineering. And so, um, yes, I had the opportunity to work in a team at Columbia University and we worked on a research project related to tissue engineering. So this is just by the way. So um, I also worked on my final year project, which, is, which was an adjustable high heel. And it's actually the inspiration for the name Levis in Heels. The reason for this project was because you would see a lot of females wearing high heels. And I was wearing high heels this afternoon. I became tired and I switched to, to flat. <laughs> um, so I thought it would be a really great project to work on. Um, and when I started this and I started presenting to my lecturers who were mostly male, they thought it was fashion design. <laughs> but a lot of work went into this. I had to um, think about the materials that I wanted to use for the prototype, how I measured the, the strength of the materials that would go into this project and the dimension and all sorts of things. So it wasn't just fashion design. Um, so yes, at the end of the course, I decided to do something about the misrepresentation of women in STEM, and I created Levers in Heels. Um, like I said, a digital platform to highlight African women in STEM. And our mission is to give a voice to these women um, to examine the barriers that they are going through and also share their experiences with young girls who would eventually become leading females um, in STEM. So we featured over 100 uh, women across Africa. Um, these are some of them. This is Esther Ngubi. She is um, an entomologist. She studies insects. Um, she's very renowned in, in Kenya. And we have Samira from Ghana. She is um, an engineer. Um, she works with robots in the oil and gas industry. And this is a really cool image you would want to show to your your girl child, so that they get inspired, they see that it's possible to do this. We also have Lucy. Lucy is an electrical engineer who's worked with uh, multinational companies, specifically in the telecommunications um, industry in Ghana. And she was the CEO of Airtel Ghana at some point. We have Neil from South Africa. She's the director of IMED Tech Group. 
Um, they use additive manufacturing to design uh, breast and facial prosthesis for cancer and burn victims. So she's actually someone you would want to get in touch with, especially in the biomedical field. We also have Zenetta. Um, Zenetta is actually um, the daughter of one of the former presidents of Ghana, President um, John Rollins. <laughs> and she's a medical doctor and she spoke to us about the work that she's doing in the medical field. And she's also um, an MP for the uh, a constituency in the greater Accra region of Ghana. We also have Precious from Uganda. And Precious is working to improve railway systems um, in the world. Now, the, the interesting thing about Precious is after I interviewed her, the president of Uganda saw the interview and reached out to her to congratulate her for the work that she's doing. So not only is it inspiring young girls, it's also having an impact on the women that I am interviewing. We have Judith who created the app um, Akira Chicks. Um, they teach young girls how to code in Kenya. And she had the opportunity to meet President Obama, the former President Obama. We have Adeola from Nigeria. She was the first African person to graduate with a PhD in biomedical engineering in Canada, in a university in Canada. Now the social impact of the project. So um, these women have made many strides in, in STEM fields, but their achievements go disregarded. Before I started the project, I didn't know of any woman in engineering or woman in tech. So I had to do a lot of research. And after the research, I, I realized that they are out there. They're probably shy to share their project or they feel like they, there's no importance attached to the work that they are doing. So it's very important to seek them and to share their stories for girls, other girls to be inspired. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, we, not only do I share their experiences, I also share what they plan on doing to develop the African country. So that it opens way for collaborations and partnerships with other industries. So um, aside that, I also organize mentorship programs where I, I connect young girls in secondary schools and universities to meet these women, to get the opportunity to be mentored by these women. And I'll give you some examples. Um, so with Esther Ngubi, I spoke about her in Kenya. I organized a video <laughs> conference with her and the African Science Academy for girls in um, the greater Accra region of Ghana. So these girls had the opportunity to connect with Esther, ask her questions, um, just to have a feel of what it means to be a scientist. And they were very excited. As you can see, they were asking so many questions. And so this is, this is what I do with regards to mentorship. I had the opportunity to work with Microsoft in Ghana, another mentorship event. And yeah, so this is basically what we do. I've also worked with young girls, teaching them how to code. Um, this was with an organization called Tech Needs Girls by my very good friend, Regina Honu, who I also interviewed. So we, we organized coding sessions um, at a club called Achievers Book Club. This club was founded by a young girl called Amina. Now, Amina was a 12-year-old girl in this um, part of Accra, the greater Accra region of Ghana, and she got married at that young age. She was forced into marriage. And she didn't want other girls to go through this. She actually escaped from her marriage and started this club to encourage young girls in that area to have an education. And so we go out there to teach them how to read, how to code. We uh, introduce them to technology, um, arts, and other, other things that would um, advance them. So um, we also got featured on CNN through our work. Um, Regina is somewhere in the middle. And this was one of our, our coding sessions. So um, through our work, a lot has been done. but. We are open for collaboration because the visibility of African women in STEM is very important. For my, I'll use myself as an example. I didn't have um, people to look up to while I was studying biomedical <laughs> engineering. And so it made um, studying the course very difficult because if you can't see something that you want to be, it becomes difficult being that. And so 
if you're interested in partnering, um, you can reach out to me and we can have that sort of collaboration. I have my contacts over there so you can note it down if you're interested. Um, so yes, I, I, I go around talking about the work that I do. I'm happy to be here again at Casa Africa. Like my good friend Moses said, we are very good friends. And I think the next time I come, my presentation should be in Spanish. Yeah, so this was the last time I was, I was in Gran Canaria. Thank you very much for having me.